Hi, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and we're going to continue talking about the TI-84 series calculator. Of course, it can also be applied to the TI-83 series calculator because these are very similar calculators. And in this section, we're going to talk about entering basic items into the calculator. In other words, doing sort of basic computations. You know, we're not going to talk about graphing in this lesson. We're not going to talk about advanced, you know, matrices or anything. We're just going to talk about entering basic uh, calculations into that and so that you can start getting really comfortable using what's at your fingertips here. So we did some of this before, but uh, I've got the calculator in normal mode, and you can check that uh, here. So we've got a floating point decimal and normal mode. So let's go ahead and get out of that. And we already said we can add by just you know adding numbers together in the calculator and the enter key takes the place of the equal sign so 5 plus 2 is 7 and just like you might guess you can divide numbers uh, again hitting the equal sign notice that for division it puts a, a slanted fraction uh, looking looking thing there so it's not a division symbol that's a fraction bar but it's the same thing it represents division and uh, of course if you have a, a number with a different number of uh, decimals here then you can multiply them together or whatever and in this case we have a lot of decimals after a lot of digits after the decimal point and that's because we're floating point mode right now so we can have you know whatever the accuracy of the calculator will let us have it'll put it behind the decimal now let's focus a little bit on these parentheses here because these are very very useful so you should know what parentheses do in algebra basically anything that happens inside of a parentheses uh, set of parentheses in, in terms of algebra is going to be executed first. So let's just take a quick example. Let's do 1 plus 2 times 3. So we're going to put this in the calculator, 1 plus 2 times 3, and just see what happens with no parentheses. We're going to get the answer of 7, and the reason is because in algebra, uh, everything here is on the same line, but multiplication always comes before addition. Uh, when it's on the same line here with no parentheses. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus the 1 gives us the 7. Now it can change that by using parentheses. So let me go ahead and open a parentheses and put in 1 plus 2, and let me close the parentheses and multiply by 3. And this is going to give us a totally different answer. It's going to be 9. The reason is because in algebra and also of course in, in the calculator because it follows the rules of algebra anything that happens inside of a parentheses always comes first so here because we've got one plus two in here it's going to evaluate this first and it's going to calculate three and then three times three is going to give us nine so depending on what you're doing for your uh, you know on your problem or on your test you may need to do that let's say uh, you know we have uh, you know we want to uh, make sure and, and calculate uh, 1 minus 2 or 1 minus 5 prior to dividing it by 8 All right, and so we calculate that we're gonna get negative 0.5 because 1 minus 5 is negative 4 negative 4 divided by 8 gives us negative 0.5 but if I leave the parentheses out 1 minus 5 divided by 8 the calculator is gonna revert back to the the other rule of algebra which is that if everything's in the same uh, level so to speak with no parentheses you're always going to execute multiplication or division before you do anything else so uh, what we're going to get here is a totally different answer it's going to take five eighths calculate that first and then one minus that result there and uh, and it's going to calculate that so now's a good time to point out something else that's really neat on the calculator see the last thing that we put in here was this expression right here and the answer we got was 0 0.375 what if I, you know, in the course of doing my homework or whatever, what if I um, decide that I want to take my last answer that I just calculated and then do something else with it? Um, instead of entering 0 0.375 in, I can just hit the uh, second function key and hit this guy down here. Second function is going to be the answer. So it's going to actually put down answer. And let's say I want to add one to that. So this is literally saying, take the last answer that you displayed to me and add one to it. And so the answer is going to be 1.375. Um, it's very, very useful because a lot of times, you know, when you're doing these calculations, you know, you may have something that you're working on here. Maybe you're in chemistry or something and you're calculating something and you, you get an answer for it. And then you need to take that answer and maybe divide by two. So I would just say last answer 
divided by two. So it's gonna take this number here, negative 12.75, and divide it by two, and it's gonna give you the answer. And then I can take the answer again that I just got, this one here, and maybe I can, you know, divide that by two again. And I'm gonna get something that cuts it in half. So using the last answer key is very, very important. You're gonna use that all the time. Now what else can we talk about here in sort of the basic math modes? Uh, well, we have x squared here, which is going to be very, very useful. Um, anytime you want to raise something to the power of 2, you're, you know, you're going to use this button here. So, you know, 2 squared, and it writes it just like you would on algebra. 2 squared is 4, because 2 times 2 is 4, right? Uh, 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. So you get the idea here. And you can even do more complicated things. Let's say inside of the parentheses you were doing some, some calculation, uh, you know, 2 divided by 5, right? And let's say you're going to raise the entire thing to the third power. So the way, whoops, I did the wrong thing here. What you're going to do to get rid of that, go back and highlight the 3 and then hit the delete key that's going to take it off. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is you'll take 2 divided by 5 and then take the, the result of that and then raise that to the power of 2. And so you can very frequently when you're doing things you might need to you know have some calculation here inside of parentheses and then you might want to square it so in this case the calculator is going to go and say 1 times 9 divided by 6 add 5 and then take the answer and uh, square it and that's what you're going to get um, right next to that you'll see you'll have a button that has x raised to the power of negative 1 and the reason that's special is because if you remember back from algebra, anything raised to the power of negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over that number. So when you take 4 and raise it to the negative 1 power, it's the same thing as saying 1 divided by 4, right? 1 fourth. And so you should get what you expect. Um, you know, uh, 1 fifth should give you 0 0.2 because. Uh, 1 over 5 should give you 0 0.2. So you get the idea here. If you put 1 and raise it to the power of negative 1, you're just going to get 1 because 1 divided by 1 uh, raised to the power of 1 is going to give you is going to give you 1. So there's just a bunch of 1's there. Uh, and again, you can mix and match it. If you're doing a calculation inside of parentheses that you're doing for something, you close those parentheses and you can of course raise the whole thing to the negative one power and everything is going to happen in here first inside of the parentheses the answer will then be raised to the power of negative one very very useful stuff these are very basic calculations now as long as we're talking about exponents let's go and talk about this button over here uh, this is uh, raising a power to uh, raising to to a random power so let's say you were not trying to raise it to the power of 2, but maybe you were trying to raise it to the power of 3. So 2 cubed would be 2 raised to the power of 3. That's what this little caret symbol means here. And if you hit the Enter key, uh, you're going to get 8 because 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 does give you 8. Uh, you know, and if you want to uh, say 4 raised to the power of, you know, a huge number, 4 raised to the power of 8, you're going to get a very large answer because that's 4 multiplied by itself uh, 8 times. Now, now one thing you should notice, if you have negative uh, 2 here and uh, square it, let's say, negative 2 squared, let's see what we get. We're going to get an answer of uh, negative 4 because the way the calculator is going to do this is it's basically going to do the exponent first. It's going to take 2 and raise it to the power of 2, getting 4, and then the negative side is just still out front. If you're intending to actually square the negative sign too, then you need to put it in parentheses. And these are the same exact rules that algebra follows too. Now this is very clear. It's telling the calculator to take negative 2 times negative 2, which should give you positive 4. So you need to make sure what you type in here is correct so that you can make sure and get the right uh, answer. All right, so we've covered x squared. We've covered x uh, to the negative 1, which is the same thing as saying 1 divided by whatever you input. Uh, we've talked about how to raise things to any power that you like, 54 to the seventh power, for instance. Uh, we've talked about recalling the last answer. So you see, I can take that last answer. Maybe I cleared the screen and I was like, oh my gosh, what is that last answer? I can just hit that and then out will spit the last answer I used. 
So here we've talked about entering exponents and dealing with basic math calculations in the TI-84 calculator. We're going to stop it right there and uh, hope you've learned something here and we'll go on to the next topic. Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and now we're going to continue talking about basic uh, use of the basic buttons here on the uh, TI-84 and TI-83 series calculators. And in this section we're going to focus on these buttons down here, the logarithm buttons. So you have a log button and you have an LN button and those are nice, nice friendly dedicated buttons on the calculator. The log button in this uh, calculator is taking a log to the base 10. And so this isn't, this isn't really a math lesson here. I mean we have to assume that you know what a logarithm is or that you're studying something that requires a logarithm, but just know that you have this button available on your calculator and when you see the log button it means base 10. Now the LN button is also a logarithm button but it's to the base E, uh, E being that magic number here that has a value of 2.7, you know, 1.8 and so on and so on and that's a very special number in, in, the, in the universe really. So this is base 10, this is base E. So if you were going to take the logarithm of of uh, 2, then simply you would take press the log button, and it would open a parenthesis for you automatically, and you would hit the number 2, you would close it, and then you would evaluate it. So you see it's very simple to do, you just have to remember to hit the log button first, and close the parentheses, and out spits a number. And you know, for those of you who really want to know, if you go ahead and just take a log of, of 2, what this calculator is doing is it's basically saying, this is a base 10 log. So 10 raised to the power of what I got as the answer is going to give me uh, the number 2. That's what a logarithm is. It's t basically saying, okay, this is base 10, so what do I need to raise it to the power of, which is given here by the answer, in order to give me a 2. So notice here on top of the log button is a 10 to the x. And that is up here because this is a base 10 logarithm. And 10 raised to the power of something is the sort of the mathematical opposite of, of doing the logarithm. So if I wanted to, to check this, I could hit this, and that would basically say 10 raised to the power of, and let's say I want to raise it to the power of my answer. So instead of typing this in, I'll just go ahead and hit answer. And I'll close the parentheses and hit enter and I should get the answer 2 back, which is exactly what I expect. Because I told you, logarithm, what it's calculating here is 10 raised to the power of whatever answer I got should give me what I have here. And so I've done that calculation and I show that to be the case. I mean, you could say log of 4 uh, and get an answer. Okay, this is the log of 4. That means 10 raised to the power of this answer should give me 4. So let's check it. 10 raised to the power of the answer I just got should give me Four, and it does. And that's what a logarithm is. You use logarithms all the time. You definitely use them in chemistry. Uh, you use them in physics too a little bit. I use them a lot in chemistry and of course uh, other, other, other branches of, of math and science also. All right, let's go to the button beneath it. It's exactly the same thing. This logarithm is to the base E. So this funny number over here, 2.71 uh, and so on and so on. If I want to take the log, the natural log is what this is called, of uh, 5, let's say, then it's going to calculate an answer, and it's going to give me this answer here, 1.609, so on and so on. And what this means is that um, E, the number E, which I just showed you here, this is the number E, don't forget that, the number E raised to the power of the answer I got should give me 5. Should give me 5. So let's go ahead and take the logarithm of 5 again. So that's the answer I got. Now let's check it. The opposite of a logarithm, natural logarithm, is taking e and raising it to the power of something. So I'll say e raised to the power of my answer, just like this, and I should get back 5 because that's just how logarithms work. There's, there's sort of a, you know, like in, in algebra when you solve an equation, you know that the opposite of division is multiplication. You know that the opposite of addition is subtraction. Well, in logarithms, you know that the opposite of the logarithm is just taking and raising something um, to the power of, of the base. So this is base 10 and this is base e logarithm, and that's the way it works uh, there. So if you take the natural log of 3, hit enter, uh, you're going to get an answer, and so to, if you wanted to check it, then raising e to the power of the answer I got should give us back what we started with. 
All right, now the only other thing I really want to make sure that we are uh, have covered in this section is over here when we talked about the X square button, the opposite quote unquote of that is the square root button. So just like you can take, you know, four and square it and get 16, uh, you can take the square root. So I hit the second function, hit this, that brings up the square root of 16 and that is going to return four, square root of 16. So it's a very, very important button that you, you have um, at your disposal. Square root of 81 is 9 because 9 times 9 does give you 81. So I think we've covered what I set out to cover in this section. We've talked about logarithms, natural logs, the opposites, which is printed right above the button. We've talked about the square root, which is right up above. We've talked about, um, uh, we've talked about using the last answer function quite a bit to check our work a little bit to try to get used to using that. And that about does it for this section. So I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and uh, let's go on to the next topic.